Nowhere in the gospel story and record of Jesus' birth or John's birth that happened during the same time were they ever just called fetuses or some little mass or not a life. Amen. They were literally called babes or children. Amen. The whole Christmas story involves pregnancy and terming the kids inside of the womb babes or children amen hallelujah somebody say life that means they were alive when when elizabeth heard the salutation salutation means greeting somebody say season greetings in luke chapter one when mary was pregnant supernaturally by the holy ghost with jesus she walked into the room of her cousin elizabeth who had been barren all her life and she's now an old woman but she's six months pregnant with John the Baptist. And she walks into the room, Mary does, and she greets Elizabeth, her cousin, and Elizabeth begins to shout and have church right there, I'm telling you, because she said, the babe that's in my womb leaped with joy and was filled with the Holy Ghost when you just greeted me. Ah, glory to God, amen. So uh, the gospel story always calls the unborn child just that, a child, a babe, amen. Amen. And we live in an hour where, uh, you know, political, demonic doctrines and ideologies are calling uh, the babe inside the womb a whole lot less and worse, all for the sake of murdering them. Come on, somebody, and aborting them. Hallelujah. But you won't find anything like that in scriptures. I had somebody on communist YouTube wanting to argue with me today. And it was where I was preaching on abortion a couple of weeks ago. And they said, preacher, have you ever read the Bible? And I thought, my God, how many, did, didn't you just stop in the 15-minute video you watched? I quoted probably, you know, 50 to 60. Scriptures. I mean, and you, you, and he said, he, he said the Bible's pro-choice, pro-choice, and what he meant by pro-choice was, you know, uh, you can choose. You should. In other words, I shouldn't be preaching and telling people what choice to make. Amen. But the Bible's clear in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. He said, "I've set before you life and death. Choose life that you and your children might live." When it comes to a baby. Going full term and living and being born, God's choice is always life. Amen. God don't give us the freedom to murder the unborn. Come on and call it a constitutional freedom and right. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? No, God never gives us liberty to kill babies inside of the womb, to kill the babes, to kill the children. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's only one choice. Some ought to say the choice to let the baby live. That's the God choice. Amen. That's the choice that Christ will lead you in. And I knew what they were meaning. They were meaning I was, you know, so to speak, you know, meddling in people's business. Well, I'm supposed to. When I'm about my father's business, I'm going to get in everybody else's business if they ain't in his. And killing babies sure ain't his business. Amen. That's all politically, you know, demon-possessed, uh, racist Planned Parenthood. Praise God. That's their business. Murder mills. Amen. Amen. And killing unborn babies. And uh, all in the name of women's rights and reproductive rights. Somebody say reproductive rights is spelled S-E-X. That's the only reproductive rights a human being's got. And so you better be responsible. Come on, if you don't want the baby, birth it and let somebody else have it. These people that can't have babies and they want them. Come on, somebody. It's never God's, you know, ordained will for any baby to be slayed in the, in, in the womb. It's a satanic sacrifice. It's not a sacred American, you know, so to speak, right. Amen. It's a, it's a satanic sacrifice. Because Psalms 106, 37, and 38 said they polluted the land with the blood of their sons and daughters. And it said they sacrificed. That means they killed their children and offered them, listen to this, to devils. Everybody say it's Satanism. Abortion is Satanism. True Christianity that's Christianity that has the real cross and the message of Christ and his cross in it, it is always pro-life 100%. Amen. And so, you know, whoever that person was, they got a spiritual jack degree. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God always says life. That's the only choice. Somebody say for the true Christian, Christ follower, there's only one choice, life. Life, life, life. And any preacher in any pulpit, any congregation in any so-called church who supports abortion at any level are false apostles and false brethren. The Bible talks about false prophets. The Bible talks about false apostles. The Bible talks about false brethren. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody say the church of this Christ that we celebrate on his birthday at Christmas will never tell his church or his pastors to support the abortionists or the agenda of the abortion. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Never, never, never will it ever be. I was asked yesterday by somebody I didn't even know when they found out I was a preacher. They put me on the spot. Amen? Hallelujah. But I'd already been to the spot. The cross. I guess they thought they was going to trip me up. Hallelujah. And they looked at me and found out I was a preacher. And they said, well, preacher, what you think about another preacher? Amen. That wants to be a politician and, um, and, and won that position politically uh, to lead us in the state of Georgia. But he says he's a pastor. But he believes it's okay to abort a baby the day before it's to be due or to be born. He said, what you think about that preacher? I'll say to you, amen, again, what I said to him yesterday. I looked at him, I said, the Bible's clear. There's false prophets, there's false apostles, and there's false brethren. I said, he, he's up under every one of those and anybody that associated with him and putting him where he is. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Shut me off, turn me off. You'll just gather with the ones that's gathering because since I, October since I've been when I started in October preaching against Halloween I come through November amen glory to God we got into tr the truth over traditions and then since we've stepped into December and I've got on some people's Santa Claus hallelujah I ain't never in my life seen so many people offended by Marvin Booth his ministry in this church I have watched 35 to 40 people in the last I don't know month and a half delete me from social media you thought it was just YouTube terminal and what's so sad about it, it's people that form the name of Jesus on their lips. I heard a, a news commentator from the world a few days ago, probably not even a week ago, saying, it looks like in America there's two kinds of Christianity. And they were speaking in respect to an election when it concerned abortion. Abortion was the topic they were talking about. And it said it, is, it appears in America there's two kinds of Christianity. There's, it's almost like there's two different beliefs. There's a, and, and they didn't know what they were saying. They, they, but they said there's a group over here that say they're his church and they're Christians and they're followers of Christ and his gospel. And they're for abortion because they just elected, um, you know, and they were talking about they just elected a pastor who's, a pastor who's for abortion in America. And, 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 and in the state of Georgia. But then there's the others uh, that say they're Christians and they're followers of Christ. Amen. And, 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 and they're against leaders, you know, who, who are for abortion at any, you know, stage of development of that unborn life in the womb. And, 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 and it's like it was confusing to the world commentators. They, they held their hands up and said, it's almost like there's two. Almost like there's two. I'll go ahead and just straighten you up and make it simple. They ain't two churches. They ain't two Christianities. They ain't but one Christianity. Come on, somebody, and it is pro-life 100% of the time. It does not choose political leaders. Come on, somebody, that are for abortion. No, 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 no. It's the church that's uncompromised. That's the church that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the one that's going to get raptured. That's the one that's going to get caught up when he comes in the clouds. Come on, the other one's going to be left behind. 
the phony make-believe church that forms his name on their lips come on and say we're his but yet the way they live and the way they support that that's wicked dark and ungodly amen and opposes his perfect will hallelujah those are the ones that's going to be left when he comes they're not his church so everybody say they ain't but one christianity they ain't but one Jesus Christ. They ain't but one church. They ain't but one Holy Ghost. They ain't but one Bible, one truth. And it's him all the way. All this other stuff is hypocrisy. It's deceit. It is nothing more. Hallelujah. As Mark or Matthew 7 and 15 warns, it's nothing more. Amen. Then glory to God. Amen. A wolf wearing sheep's clothing. Because true Christianity is 100% pro-life, always, with no compromise whatsoever. Somebody say it's real easy. Oh, yeah, praise God. I just thought I'd preach a little bit there, Phil. Felt led there. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Christmas story, read it in Luke 1 and Luke 2, never does it call the unborn, which was Jesus, the unborn, which was John the Baptist, Never called them what the world would term and call them just some little, you know, mass, some little fetus, not really a life yet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Called them babes, which just translates child or children. Some of us say we don't become children when we're born. We're children in the womb. Well, that's a babe in the womb. Not a babe when it's born. Hallelujah. And uh, God have mercy on us. There's the, there's the uncompromising Christmas gospel. Amen. Praise God when it concerns abortion. To God be the praise. Mm, for the unto Lord. us a child is born. Not unto us after birth a child. No. Somebody say unto us a child is born. That means this scripture supports what we said earlier from Luke 1 and Luke 2. The Christmas story never calls the unborn a fetus or a little mass or not a person, not a, th not, don't call them a thing. It calls them a child, called them a babe. Somebody say, for unto us a child is born. Child comes before born. That means before that babe is born, that is a babe in mama's womb. It is a child before its birth. Birth don't make it a child. It's a child before birth. That's why it's murder when it's aborted. But even uh, after his birth, uh, there was a wicked political leader named King Herod, uh, and he had all the children in Matthew 2 in Bethlehem uh, for fear of Jesus uh, being the king over him. Uh, he wanted to murder him, and he didn't know where he was at, uh, so he knew he was in Bethlehem according to the prophecies. Uh, amen. And the wise men uh, were warned in a dream in verse 12 of Matthew 2 and didn't go back to him, uh, so he got mad, uh, and that political wicked king made a declaration and had all the babes two years and under. That means if they were two-year toddlers by, you know, the counting from the day of their birth, if they were in their second year, they were killed all the way to the womb. Women that were pregnant and showing, they killed them. Two and under. This was after Jesus was born. It's in your Bible. It was fulfillment prophesied by Micah, the prophet in Micah 5. He talked about how Ephrathah, how Bethlehem, you'd hear the wailing and the women mourning. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody would say it was religious, political wickedness. All a combination because old political King Herod said, I want to worship him. In Matthew 2, 7, he said, I want to go worship him. But he didn't want to worship Jesus. He wanted to waste Jesus. And God warned them wise men in a dream. Hallelujah. So